Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology faculty of Medicine Mansour University. Today, our topic about the management of second stage of labor. I have a, a long lecture before about normal labor and also management of labor in general. But today, I will concentrate only on the second stage of labor. Okay? So, what are the objectives? Definition, second stage, the primary goal of attendant in second stage, skilled attendant should do what is very important from obstetrician or midwife to do during second stage of labor. So let us start with the definition. What is the second stage? Second stage start from full dilatation of the cervix up to complete delivery of the single tool baby or the last baby in a multiple pregnancy. So, delivery of the baby is the end of second stage. The starting point, full dilatation of the cervix. Okay? okay. This is the second stage. What is the duration of second stage? In primary gravity, from two to three hours. Why we give range from two to three hours. Sometimes the patient may have epidural anesthesia. Okay, so from two to three hours, yes. This is for primary grab. For multibara, from one to two hours. Also, it is expected to be prolonged with epidural analgesia or anesthesia. Okay, so in multibara, it is one to two hours. In prime gravida from two to three hours. At the start of the second stage, the fetal presenting part may or may not be fully engaged, and the woman may or may not have the urge to push. That's why recently we divided the second stage into passive part and the active part. And during the active part, we ask the lady to push down when she feels the urge of peering down, involuntary, okay? This is the, the start of the active part of the second stage. Okay, what is the primary goal? You should give high quality care in the second stage of labor. Why? To prevent maternal and neonatal morbidity and mortality. Prevent still births and newborn complication like undetected hypoxia and dysthymia. Prevent maternal mortality and morbidity like vesicovaginal fistula, perineal tears, infection, hemorrhage, as well as worsening of hypertensive disease or other medical disease if the patient is cardiac or has a respiratory problem. So, you should give high quality care in the second stage of labor. And also, the close monitoring to offer timely intervention, which is very important, to prevent adverse outcomes. Timely intervention is very important. You may at any time need instrumental delivery like vacuum of forceps. You may need emergency cesarean section even. So, close monitoring is very important. So, skill that didn't should do. Obstetrician or midwife who carry the job should do what? First, continuously provide support to the woman in labor okay and give her information about the progress of labor and they encourage her okay so continuous support to the woman in labor and give her information about about the progress of labor and they encourage her 
is very important. Encourage active pushing once the urge to peer down is present. This is the active part of the second stage. When there is urge to peer down, you should encourage active pushing. Ask her to push down. And encourage her to adopt any position for pushing preferred by her. Except lying supine. Why lying supine is not preferred? There is risk of orthocaval compression which will lead to reduction in uterine placental perfusion. Ischemia. Okay? And the causing fetal stress. So, the patient in semi-sitting, sitting or standing, she can do pushing. Okay? But avoid lying supine to avoid orthocaval compression and reduced uteroplacental perfusion. Okay? Then do fetal heart rate monitoring every five minutes. And in high risk pregnancy, continuous monitoring with CTG. In normal pregnancy, every five minutes you should auscultate using handheld Doppler, like Sonicate, every five minutes, okay? To detect any fetal distress when bradycardia happens. Okay? okay. Also check maternal blood pressure and the pulse, especially in cases with hypertension with pregnancy, preeclampsia, severe anemia, or cardiac patient. So we should monitor the pulse and the blood pressure. Of the mother. Also, we should observe the progressive descent and the rotation of the presenting part. And this includes observing progressive distension of the perineum and the visibility of the presenting part and the vaginal examination, especially where progress appears to be slow. So, we should examine the woman vaginally to detect the engagement. We know that engagement at the level of the ischial spine, when the pipe parietal, which is the largest transverse diameter, passing through the plane of pelvic inlet, the lowermost part of the vertex at the level of the ischial spine, this is station zero, below it by one centimeter plus one, one centimeter more, two plus two, and so on. Until the head come to the perineum, okay? When the head is deeply engaged, okay? Be ready to augment contraction. If there is inefficient uterine contraction, what is the efficient uterine contraction? Three to five contraction per 10 minutes. Each one ex extend for 40 to 60 seconds. So if there is no efficient contraction, I should augment labor with oxytocin infusion. Okay? So strong contraction is needed. And also with monitoring of the fetal heart rate. If the fetal heart rate is normal, it's okay. Oxytocin infusion can be used. Then conduct the delivery when the head descends down to the perineum. You can see the vault at the vaginal enteritis. Start to do support to the perineum by one hand as in this picture while the other hand pressing over the head down to maintain flexion of the head and slowing the progress 
of labor because delivery of the head should be slow not rapid we know that in normal labor the delivery of the head of vertex presentation is by extension so we press the head down so when extension happen will happen slowly and it will happen in between contraction while the other hand with towel do pressure on the perineum up so your hand separating the face and the chin of the baby from the sacrum and the coccyx of the mother and this is called regime maneuver as you see here one hand over the perineum the other hand over the head pushing the head down while the other hand pushing the perineum okay this is called regime maneuver what is the aim of regime maneuver to avoid perineal fear or laceration okay so this is the aim and the very important aim of attendant of a woman in labor during second stage is to avoid perineal laceration by doing this maneuver okay why this maneuver is important because when i do pressure on the head down to slow the progress of labor i wanna the part of the head which will dilate the valve ring the smallest diameter which is sub occipital pragmatic which is 9.5 centimeter while the, if the head rapidly extended and the progress was fast the valve ring will be occupied by larger part of the head larger diameter which is occipital frontal diameter which is 11.5 centimeter imagine the difference between sub occipital pragmatic which is 9.5 and the occipital frontal which is 11.5 so it is wise to let the part of the head the smaller one with a smaller diameter with sub occipital pragmatic is the one which distends the vulvar ring so the capacity of the space of the vulvar ring is suitable but if larger diameter will cause or may cause perineal tear or vaginal tear okay so that's why we do this maneuver okay in some cases you may need instrumental delivery like vacuum or forceps and should be ready beside you and uh, when indicated for fetal bradycardia fetal distress you want you want to exhibit the birth because there is fetal distress you can use vacuum immediately or if there is prolonged second stage or you want to you want to shorten second stage because the patient is cardiac or has respiratory problem so you want to shorten the the second stage so you may need an experimental delivery like vacuum or force or if there is acute fetal distress and the head is engaged you can do outlet for uh, vacuum and so on so instrumental delivery should be ready at any time this is the end of this lecture. This is my box published on Amazon textbook of obstetric textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, multiple choice question book, and the last one, medical disorder in pregnancy. Thank you, everybody. My best wishes for all of you.